think the bottom line here is that given the uncertainty about the recovery, we should expect the People's Bank of China still to have a modest yeah. easing bias here. Okay, and what does that actually mean in practice if you're talking about a modest easing bias? When would you expect the next significant move perhaps coming from the PBOC? Sure. So the PBOC and the Politburo in their last couple of statements have become much more neutral on the outlook. And so far, they've only cut interest rates by 30 basis points for the main benchmark interest rates in China. So at the moment, there doesn't seem to be any signal from the authorities that they want to ease policy again. But let's say the monthly data that we saw today, let's say, continues to show just a tepid rebound. Then the authorities towards the end of the year may decide, OK, maybe uh, it's time to have maybe another 20 basis points of rate cuts towards year end, just to ensure that the recovery continues at this relatively steady pace rather than losing momentum too rapidly. Mm. Mansoor, how closely are you watching, good morning, can we join in this conversation, how closely are you watching the jobs data in China because the unemployment rate has come in at 5.7%. If you look at job creation activity from Jan to July, they've put in about 6.7 million jobs. I think uh, as far as uh, their budgeted target for the year was concerned, they were looking at 9 million jobs. So they're seeming like front-loading the process. But, you know, in that in all that talk about where retail sales activity goes from here, where the consumption story goes from here, uh, that is, of course, rooted on how much moves in the jobs market. Yes, you're absolutely right. And the, the employment market is really key here. If you're a consumer and you're worried about your job prospects, then you're not going to open your wallet. Um, so in China's case, the authorities will want to make sure that employment growth remains healthy in order to encourage a return to consumption. So that's one key that we're looking at in terms of the outlook. And then the other key risk, as you mentioned already on the, uh, in the program, is just what happens with the external side with U.S.-China trade relations. And I think there what's important is that provided the U.S. doesn't in, uh, increase tariffs again on Chinese exports, then markets will continue to be confident that the worst of the trade war has already been priced into uh, the yuan. Uh, if the yuan can rebound further, as we expect from here, that will then give investors more confidence on the broader China outlook. But how much of a rebound are you expecting in the yuan from here? And so yeah, so um, I have a uh, one-year forecast of uh, the dollar falling to 675 against the Chinese yuan. So we're about 695 at the moment. Um, it's predicated on the view that the uh, tariff war that we saw the last couple of years is now essentially peaked. So we're seeing lots of tension in other areas, but if mm. uh, U.S. tariffs aren't raised further, that will allow the yuan to recover lost ground.